Okay, we've discussed and showed how to actually lay the uh, fabric with the blanket method. We did the bottom surface first, then we did the top surface. We showed how to mark and glue the edges. So what we're going to do now is demonstrate how to put a perimeter tape around these curved surfaces here. Uh, previously on the wing covering we showed how to lay the flat tapes over the ribs. So we've gone ahead and we've got that done on these. The main thing now is to demonstrate how to use a non-bias standard tape and how to get a pretty finish around these edges. You notice on this surface have a fairly wide area here, a large diameter tube and it transitions into a small diameter tube. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we'll use 3 inch on this, we'll use 2 inch on this. And we're going to do the 2 inch tape first, let it end about right in here, then the 3 inch tape can come over, it's a little wider, and we'll let it blend into this 2 inch. And we'll get a nice transition there. So to do this, the first thing we have to do, again, we let our, we let our glue do a lot of the work for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to pre-glue around the perimeter of this surface. And when I say around the perimeter, we want just about a all oh, three-eighths, half inch wide, it doesn't matter, but just a nice little coat of glue, kind of like what we demonstrated when we did the blanket method and we glued around the edges of our frame. Now here, we're not putting glue on the entire area that the tape's going to lay, primarily around this outer perimeter. What we'll do to show how when this glue dries, how we can tack the tape into place and let it automatically center itself and then go from there to actually get the fit and form. And while that's drying, we'll go ahead and demonstrate how to put a straight tape on a straight surface here, pretty much using the same procedure, except here we've got hinge areas to go around. We'll show a method that's very simple to do that. In this case here, we're going to use 3 inch tape. So what we do is, and I've already pre-glued this. I did this earlier today, so it'll be dry now. We're going to pull off a piece of tape here. And take our rotary pinking shears. Let's go ahead and cut that off to rough length. I like to leave an inch or so extra, something to work with. And then we're going to fold the tape in half. One thing I like to look for is if there's a little curl on the outer edge of the tapes. I try to get that to where if there is a curl, that it actually lays down against the finished surface. It makes it just a little bit easier to go ahead and, and get a good fit and finish on that. Makes the tape edge lay down just a little better. And what we want to do now is find a center line. So I just take the tape, fold it in half like this and hold it. Now I just drag it across the surface. The corner of this workbench works really good. We just want to put a light crease into that. We'll do the whole entire length of the tape like that. And all we're doing here is finding the center of the tape. By doing this, we don't have to make a bunch of marks on both sides to try to keep the tape centered. So what we'll do is we'll put this crease right on the center of our tube and by doing that we've automatically centered our tape of where we want it to lay. Now, before we put it down, we need to mark where our cutouts are for our hinges. So what we're going to do is lay the crease right at the edge of those. Notice how I can just kind of lightly tack this tape down into that dried glue makes it real easy to do here because now we don't have to try to handle that tape and hold it in place. There it is. Now we can take our pencil because the tape is already laid out here and we can go ahead and mark this where our cutout will be for our hinges that protrude through the tape. So let's go ahead and mark those. In this case here there happens to be a total of four cutouts. Now we got a reference mark there. We'll take our scissors and we'll just pull this end loose. It's lightly tacked. And now we're going to go ahead and cut. And keep in mind, this is not a real wide gap. So the tendency normally 
is to make this cutout much too wide. Stay on the conservative side. Stay a little narrow with it. You can always trim it a little wider if you need to. That right there is probably plenty. We'll go ahead and notch all four of our cutout marks here. Then we just fold the fabric back under and go ahead take our scissors here and just cut that cut that notch right out of there. Just like that. And just Okay, there's one of them. Catch the second one. We've already caught it. We'll go ahead now. We'll cut it out. If you cut past a little ways, it doesn't hurt. You need to clean it up enough so it'll get that piece out of there. Now we can open it up. Lay it right over our hinge. You see we got a very nice fit and finish right there. It fits around it really nice. Now we'll go to the other end. We're going to repeat that. Just notch each section here. Now what we want to do is notice I put the crease down. Put the crease down toward your work. If you put it up it'll tend to act like it'll tint a little bit. By doing it down when you rub it in it rubs that out. You can see what we're doing here. We can kind of visualize the center of our piece of tube. Lay that crease right into it. Just lightly rub it in place. And as you can see, our tape is lightly tacked. We don't have to try to fight it and hold it and work with it. Once we get this rubbed down here, get it lined up. There we are. There it is. Tacked in place. Makes it real easy to work with. Now again, we don't want this moving around on us. I'm going to just kind of pull it over the edge. I'm going to take my iron. I'm going to just iron this center. I don't want it moving on me. Again, this is our glue clamp. We're really clamping it into place now. We'll pull it out of the table here. We'll lay it down. See, this is the bottom surface. We've got a nice straight overlap. You'll be able to see how pretty that comes out. Now what I like to do is to push the tape over, pull the slack out of it. Again, we're anchored on the center, so it's not moving on us. Put a pencil mark, go about the center, put a pencil mark in towards the other end, and pencil mark it. Now we can take our straight edge here, my old standby Venetian blind I use for all my tape line markings. We just draw us a line across the fabric here. You really don't have to do this. You can just kind of judge the width of the tape when you're putting your glue down. But if you do this ahead of time, what it does, it gives you a reference to go to when you're brushing your glue down and you end up without a lot of glue slop way out past the tape line. Now to glue that, we're going to have two things here. We're going to use our paper towel to wipe again. And to glue that tape down now, just a very simple matter, brush glue in out to the pencil line. In fact, it doesn't hurt to go out just past the edge of it a little bit. You want to make sure there's plenty of glue to get these edges laid down. Pull your tape over into that, brush your glue down through it. You see it's getting nice and wet. There's a good color change there. Brush the glue into it nice and tight. What you want to see is a nice uniform change of color there. Once you get that then, take your paper towel and we're going to wipe all the surplus off. Now again, like we've explained before, wiping this is doing two things for us. It's really forcing the glue down through the pores of the tape and into the lower surface so we get 100% penetration. Also, we're wiping all the excess glue off so we don't have a buildup of glue here on top of our tape. We can actually take the hot iron and iron over this then you don't pick up any glue because there's not a residual of glue on the top of the tape to stick to the iron. 